Hello, I'm Gary Vaughn with Guided Business Solutions. I'm here to have a conversation with an old friend. We started working together uh, many years ago, um, uh, Kelly Steinke from Read Learning. And, um, well, hello, by the way. Good morning. Good, it's it's a, great to be here. We connect every once in a great while, usually over a cup of coffee, um, if there's a question or if there's a, a, something to celebrate in your business and things like that. But uh, maybe just, yeah. Talk about how do we meet? I mean, back in back in the day, as they say. Right? Yeah. Well, Gary and I met in 2015, so it's been like six years now yeah. since we first started working together, and you know, our relationship just uh, came about um, really through networking, through referral. So mm -hmm. I I was a classroom teacher at the time and looking for a way to open a viable business within the community to serve a need that is unmet. And Gary and I uh, were connected through, through a colleague and um, one, you know, one thing led to another and, and we worked together. How long did we work together? About a year? Yeah, about a, usually it's a year. We, I think yeah. we worked a year together. Um, once a week. Yeah, once a week. <clears throat> you had homework, I had homework. Um, we, you know, looked at, and I, well, typically what we see is you came in as a subject matter expert. You really are. You, you've proven it. You're a subject matter expert. But it was that business model that you needed to create to have a sustainable business so you mm -hmm. could take that knowledge you have and apply it in a different way. You were playing mm -hmm. in the school district. And you wanted to do is apply it in a business setting, right? Mm -hmm. And so that... The business model is what you and I worked on, uh, and on the other side, you're working on the materials. So you really had a two-prong approach on that uh, as we worked together. Yeah, yeah, and, and I really, you know, my being a subject matter expert, I really was not in the business world. I didn't have any business courses behind me or, or knowledge outside of a, a few random books. So r really, meeting, being connected with your company with Guidant Business Solutions was really. Uh, a gift because it, it gave me the vehicle that I needed to take my subject matter knowledge and spin it into something that was actually a viable business that would you know benefit the community. So how many books do you have? What's your business look like right now? Right? Yeah, so within the past six years since we worked together for that first year, I founded Read Learning Educational Services. That's where we're sitting here right yep. now having our conversation and this is a reading center. It's a specialized reading center. Of course, we work with students who really struggle with reading and spelling, uh, who have dyslexia, uh, whether diagnosed or not. And I have a team of seven teachers. We work with kids one-on-one -on -one in office as well as online. So we work with kids throughout, throughout the whole state of Wisconsin uh, and would have the capacity to, to work with kids outside of Wisconsin. But, you know, in addition to the services we offer at the Reading Center, of course, when we were working together, you really were instrumental in helping me with uh, just the technical things behind publishing. You know, publishing my first curricular manual, uh, which was a blue book. And, and since then, so within the six years, I've published three different manuals, okay. which completes a whole series of, of curriculum, specialized curriculum for students who really struggle with reading and spelling. Cool. So. so is this the only profit? Now we talk about profit centers, and yeah. that's, that's a word that, that we introduce to each other. Is this the only profit center you have, or do you have other areas where you can generate revenue? <laughs> so as I was reading your book, Gary, uh, I, I just I could hear you talking with me you know, throughout that whole nine, nine months to 12 months we worked together. And the profit center term um, it was such a great way for me to organize as, as a new business person the different ways a business could bring in revenue. But no, so we have the Reading Center. We also offer educational consultations, which is kind of like a roadmap. Yep. Your parents come in confused. We give them guidance. Uh, we also offer dyslexia diagnosis. Um, we offer professional developments. Uh, we're, we offer the curriculum, of course. Uh, executive functioning <laughs> training for small groups. You know, so that's, that's working with kids and adults, um, at least fifth grade and up on time management organization. Cool. Uh, so there's, you know, several different profit centers. Of course, they weren't all fleshed out at the very beginning. Right. But as time goes on, you, you work through them and develop them more. Cool. Yeah. So we were talking just briefly before about the, you know, before um, we started rolling here, about the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, moving from a school district, a school setting, and then moving into owning your own business, 
And we were talking about it not being a job or a career, but it's a lifestyle. And it's for your whole family, right? So the whole family has to yeah. be it, behind this. It makes it so much easier if that's the case. And how that worked with, with, yeah, well, with your guys. <laughs> that was a huge, huge leap that you really... I mean, working with you was really instrumental because it, it was a huge leap and we needed a lot of, of business support to know that that we would this would work. So essentially when you quit your job, right, you lose half of your family's income. So my husband, you know, was the one that kept us afloat financially uh, for that year or two where you're kind of in limbo. Right. Um, and yeah, so it yeah it was a quite a sacrifice at first yeah and yeah. it's in uh, you know it's not just starting the business but it's starting the business to the point where the business will cash flow so it doesn't drain on your personal finances <clears throat> that that your husband might be bringing into the into your family right mm -hmm. so cool. yeah so you know writing the curriculum was interesting too because you know, it's very expensive to, to publish curriculum and, and get your, your graphic artists and your editors and your everything all lined up, all your professionals lined up. Uh, and so read learning, you know, it, it's really been instrumental in being able to fund a project like that and, and, and you know, not put the business into debt doing it. Yeah. So, the, so as you're working through deciding on what to do, what, how's that thought process? Because you came, you've got three of these lessons now. Uh, do, does it develop as it goes? Did you have the whole great big picture at the start? How did the evolution of the business work for you? you now you're referring to Silver Moon? Uh, to the either curriculum? one, because yeah, the curriculum yeah. is one thing, but then you've got relearning is another mm -hmm. thing, right? So, but they're but they're kind of sister projects in a sense. Aren't yeah, they? they really are. I well, the curriculum really did evolve into something I never expected it to. Really, I set out to make a packet of worksheets, <laughs> quite right. honestly, and uh, <clears throat> I just realized that was not uh, doable. You know, it wouldn't be uh, with teachers couldn't deliver it with good fidelity. So uh, it evolved into a much larger project than it was. And, and book one, it led into book two, and book two led into book three. And initially, it was really just a very small And idea. that seems like the, that's the entrepreneurial personality. You know, you're constantly improving. You're, you're a problem solver. You see something that you can make better, so you want to jump in and make yeah. it better and go forward from there. Uh, and, and I think that's, a, that's an important part because without that, it... It's, it's easy to give up at, at the beginning, you know, yeah. it's that, you know, we talk in a book about the failure card, right? You don't put yeah. it in, it's like playing cards and you don't have the failure card in your deck, you can't throw it on the table. You have to find a way to make it work, whether it's working perfect today or not, it might be working good enough, mm -hmm. and then we'll make it perfect down the road as we refine it as we go forward, so... Yeah, you know, I, I, I could hear you speaking to me in our coaching sessions and as I read through some of your passages in your book, uh, that failure card is huge because if you're going to make the leap from one career to a different career, especially when you are a subject matter expert and you maybe don't have that business expertise to back you and give you confidence, uh, you really do have to ditch the failure card. Uh, and I'll, I'll never forget, I, I got really nervous uh, for for a little while there and i actually went and put my name in a sub pool okay you know, i thought oh gosh i might need some income i might need to just <clears> sub <throat> here and there uh, i got the call from a school district sub positions available and i i'll never forget listening to that message going what am i doing I, failure card gotta go uh so I, I didn't take any of those sub jobs and i just kept putting my attention and energies towards the reading center and towards the curriculum and and uh, it needed that time and it needed See, that. I think that's an important part. If you would have done something like that, your time would have been split, mm -hmm. right? Because we want, to, we want to be good at whatever we do. <clears throat> so if we want to be good at, at starting the business, that's great. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we want to be good at being a sub, we're going to do that, right? Because you don't, you know, I know your personality. You're going to be all in. You're going to want to do the best job you can at whatever you're doing. So you would have done that for the sub work, but then it would have taken away from the business and it would have just taken the business, slowed it down a couple of gears before you had the opportunity to take off. Now, some people, maybe that's okay with them, but you know, I'm of the mindset that we're all in and we're just gonna work our way through it. 
pivoting, like you had said, mm -hmm. where if it's, okay, we're going to go this way, and, and if something changes, well, I'm willing to pivot and mm -hmm. change a little bit of the business model in order to see it you know, grow and become more than what it was before we pivoted. So. Right. And, you know, speaking of pivoting, that makes me think of COVID. You know, we've gone through this pandemic with, you know, everything in the past year and a half, two years. And we really had to pivot because we had online services before uh, COVID hit. But, I mean, we took 100% of our students, 100% of our staff, got everyone trained online, everyone connected, and we sustained. We didn't lose a single See? student throughout all of COVID. In fact, we, we gained students because we're really very good at what we do. Right. Um, but you know, and another message I heard loud and clear in your book is, you know, when you're first starting a business, it's, it's seeing your business as an entity sitting in that chair across the table yeah. from you. Yeah, we actually, that's something that we do. We put an empty chair by the, you know, <laughs> on the table and say, okay, you know, you can only do so much. You know, I, I always talk about payroll. You know, if you've, you've got seven people working for you right now, good for you. Yeah. Congratulations on that. The idea is, is if you had to make payroll for them and take it out of your personal funds, it's like, well, that would be a pretty, you know, pretty substantial dollar amount you're paying out. But the business sitting over here in this chair, the business can do that, right? The business mm -hmm. has a lot more, you know, flexibility and, and all of a sudden, you know, wherewithal than we do as individuals. We have to think about the business and we're the business's representative in a sense. Mm -hmm. So we have to think about it almost as a separate entity, uh, almost like corporatizing our mind on the business as the business because we can't come in, especially first starting off a business, we can't, we can't run it like we run our home. We can't run the checkbook like we run our home checkbook. We can't run the organization like we would run our family. It's a business and we have to mm -hmm. think about it like a business. It's kind of... Um, we talked a little bit about the white shirt story uh, yeah, lesson yeah. in the book. Um, really what that is, is you have to take some time to separate yourself from the business, working in the business, which I know you do. Mm -hmm. You have to set some time aside to think about the business, working on the business. And, you know, it's serious stuff. So you have to really dedicate a certain amount of your week on what am I going to, you know, let's talk about, let's think about this business and how we're going to create, you know, create it going forward. Yeah, you know, that was one of the hugest leaps for me, too, when I started this whole journey. It was, well, you, you can work in the business, but then you also have to work on the business. Whereas before, I was just essentially working in the business. Yeah, I was the teacher. And, and as the business evolves and grows, you know, it, it really does take on its own culture and personality. And, you know, it you really... I really do think you have to look at your business as um, bigger than you. You know, it's not just all about right. me. It really is the um, culture we have here and what we're able to offer the community. And and <laughs> I'll never forget when you said you got to think about the business sitting over there across the table because I thought, what? <laughs> what <in the> <laughs> this guy's, this guy's it crazy, makes sense right? now. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you know, and, yeah. and, and, it, the visuals really help a lot. I think mm -hmm. and a lot of a lot of the ways that, that the lessons in the book. Are all are all visual because again, you know, we're subject matter experts. We're not. We don't sit down and read novels for the most part. We don't have time most of the time. Maybe you do, but a lot of people don't. <laughs> don't but know. but the idea is that they're they're quick. They're they're easy. You know, we really talked about the in twenty minutes is kind of uh, we were talking before uh, about hey, let's take a half hour lunch. When was the last time you took half hour of your half hour lunch? Right. We just don't do that as business owners. We might take ten minutes and frankly, scarf down our food and go back to work again, right? Mm -hmm. And what we're really looking for here is take, take the whole half hour, eat your, eat your meal in 10 minutes, take another 10 minutes to read a few, three or four of these lessons, and then sit back and think, take another 10 minutes to think about how am I going to apply them, and then mm -hmm. apply them when you go back to work after your, after your lunch break. Mm -hmm. So it's the, it, you know, especially when you first start out, because you are doing everything. You and I would bet you you're doing an awful lot of everything right now too, even with your seven employees. But as we start off a business, we do everything. We do, we we open the door at the beginning of the day. We lock the door up at the end of the day. And if there's anything that has to be done between that, as a business owner, we're doing that, right? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> try. It's, it's true. It's busy. It's very busy. It is. And yeah. I'm trying to take some time off to think about a business while I've got all this other stuff to do. It gets. It, can, you know. it, it gets tough. Um, it's especially I, I'm at the point where, 
Yeah, I, I'm doing some other roles, fulfilling some other roles. I'm teaching at two, actually two different universities and, mm -hmm. uh, as an adjunct. And you go, all right, uh, you, you can't ignore the business. You can't just, you, it does run by itself <laughs> to some extent, but you really do have to make sure you dedicate time to really yeah. work on it and grow your people and just make sure you're, you're making those people connections. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of, I think it's important and it's, it's kind of like what we do together. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about what a couple, maybe a month ago or so, we saw, stopped and had a cup of coffee together, right? Yeah. And just to talk about the business. And, you know, the nice thing about that is if I work, you know, working with you, I know the business more intimately than others do because we help at the very beginning of it. So as, as you know, someone to talk to about the business, at least, you know, hey, he knows where I, where I came from and going mm -hmm. forward. And we're talking about some of the bigger challenges today now, even after six, seven years after you started the business, there's still challenges, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There, I think every business will always have challenges, no matter how well you're doing or how poorly you're doing. Right. But um, the challenges change. Right. So as you grow, you get different challenges, um, you know, and and systems change, too. Right. You want good systems in place mm -hmm. um, so that your employees feel supported so that your families are, are treated equitably uh, and so that you're de you know, you're delivering a, the really the highest quality service you can possibly provide. Yeah. See, and, and as a business owner, basically, I see a lot of business owners as problem solvers. Mm -hmm. That's what we. Otherwise, we wouldn't be in business. We'd be working for somebody else who can solve problems. Yeah. So we're problem solvers. We see an issue. Mm -hmm. We want to change it. We see an opportunity. Even the opportunity within your own company now, you want to mm -hmm. you want to improve it. You want to change it. So that constant improvement uh, is important. And I think you know you start looking. You talked a little bit about culture and things like that. All those different lessons. We talk a little bit about each one of them in you know in the book. But all these different lessons. Uh, are important as you're going forward. The benefit, as we're talking, I think the benefit that you have versus somebody who's just picked the book up is, yeah. you know, we were doing, you know, we did it before you read the book. I mean, mm -hmm. frankly, right? Mm -hmm. We were doing a lot of these less lessons. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hearing time. you speak as I read the book because <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, we worked together so long. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that the, the reason that we put the book together was we don't get. I don't get to work with everybody, right? Obviously, yeah. there's not enough time. Uh, the idea is giving these lessons out to people, and hopefully, it helps them as they make that transition from whatever they're doing now as a subject matter expert. And frankly, that's how a lot of people start businesses. You know, they're yeah. a subject matter expert in whatever field, whether it's I'm, I'm, I'm an auto mechanic and I'm a subject matter expert there. Um, you know, I'm a chiropractor or, mm -hmm. you know, in the professional services, whatever it might be, uh, electrician, plumbers, I've worked with all of them. I'm a subject matter expert, but I've never run a business. Mm -hmm. And that's the challenge of trying to put those two together. Yeah. And, you know, just, you know, I, I think for someone who's a, just a startup or, or someone who's been in business for years, someone who hasn't worked with you or someone who has worked with you, I think anyone who would pick up this book would get some good guidance. You know, it's just nice to read through a few of the scenarios, and they're very short, yeah. and to pause and think about them. Uh, because it, it offers some centering, right? It, in, a, in reflection, you go, all right, <laughs> that's a good point. Is that something I'm practicing in my business? Yeah, it's just, it's just somebody else's opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Another person's perspective on it. The thing is, and I don't know how you read it, <clears throat> but they don't have to be read. In, there's 60 of 60 lessons. They don't have to be read in sequence. Mm -hmm. So you just pick the ones that that are relevant today, in a sense, right? right? And then you you think about that as you go forward. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very much, very much enjoyed the book, and I would, I would recommend. I have you know friends looking at starting up their own businesses and right. or in their own businesses, and it's a great book to pick up. Cool. Yeah. So. Let's talk about, you've got another, your last version, your third lesson coming out. When is that? Is yeah, it? well, this is it. So this is set three. Um, what, what started off as an idea to make kind of a packet of worksheets for teachers, right, right. ended up being an entire supplemental <laughs> curriculum. And it's, it's specialized, too. It follows a structured literacy-based um, approach to reading, which oh. is kind of steeped in the science of reading. So what you have in set one is an instructor's manual. It's blue in color. They're differentiated by color. Uh, you work through a set of spelling rules that mm -hmm. teaches kids how to work with read and spell 
closed syllable patterns and open syllable patterns and, and schwa patterns, which is that funky sound in our language. It says, uh, uh yeah. <laughs> right? okay. it's like that. I always tease with my students. It's a thinking sound. It's, uh, you know, okay. schwa. It's the most common vowel sound in our language, but the most confusing too. So, you know, then you, you, so that's book one, then you go naturally into progression with book two and you introduce three other new syllable patterns, which is you know, seven reasons for silent E, reasons, you know, constant LE patterns, and, and then your sticky kind of glued syllable patterns like A-N-G, I-N-G. Um, and it's amazing, you know, when you, you start teaching these skills explicitly to students who just don't get it when they're introduced too holistically, they latch on, you know, and, and these are bright kids, right. and they they learn to spell, but they also learn to to read. They, it helps their phonics, their phonemic awareness, their word structure knowledge, um, knowledge with syllabication and syllable types. And then as you move into book three, this is the final um, book in the series because it it finishes out the seven syllables in our language. So we get to Bossier and, and vowel team syllables. So it's. Are it's, you sure it's the final? I don't know. It is. <laughs> I don't think I can create an eighth one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, but uh, but up and coming, I do have, uh, of course, other books. I have some artwork done for. We're going to publish a, a small curriculum on suffix spelling rules and suffixes and prefixes, and we've got some other projects going. So one thing I noticed when we first started working together that you wanted your own artwork, that you went out there and created mm. something that was specific to what you're doing. You weren't you know, grabbing something off of Google and, or doing whatever. You, these are all originals and they're all your ideas and they're all really cute and, yeah. and you know, and they and they have, you know, a purpose for it. Um, and that was, I mean, that was pricey, but what you did on the front end of the business is you didn't cut corners. You know, you, mm -hmm. you, you may, you know, you put the investment in on the front end, hoping that there would be this return on the back end. And you had to have that leap of faith. That's where we're talking about, okay, if I'm not going to fail, I'm going to go for all... All in on the front end, right? Yeah, we, we and I did. I, I went all in. Uh, graphics are so important for kids, you know, in schools, and there's especially with your struggling learners, you you need some sort of memory trigger, some sort of interest vehicle to get them engaged in what you're teaching them. And yeah, I, I did hire a fantastically talented graphic artist, um, Scott Alberts, with Alberts illustration and design yep. uh, and he's created all of the illustrations for every single spelling rule they're amazing but you know you also go the next step and you you get the registered trademark you know right. you work with the right right legal pieces so that everything's in place so your work is protected um, because we worked on that on the very beginning of <laughs> yes. the process you know the the nice thing about this is <clears throat> once you did it for your first you know edition coming through now you know how to do it and now you can do it for the second and third. Mm -hmm. It was the same way when we worked on the business model. Once we set up the business model, you might want to put another business together as you expand this. You yeah. have the business model concept. You have the skeleton of the business model. And what I talk about when a business model, it's kind of like the skeleton. And then as a subject matter expert, you bring all of the, you know, you build off that skeleton to, to build your, your business as, you know, as you've done so far. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, you know, getting the help, I guess, would be, would be important on the very beginning of it. And then afterwards, you've just taken it off and, you know, and we're, you know yeah, taken it to the moon, you know, so it's well, a good thing. You can't, you, you can't build a house without a firm foundation, right? It's like you right. can't build a strong reader without them having their basic, you know, building blocks of, of phonemic awareness cool. and phonics. Just, so I liken that to the business model too. You, I don't know how far I would have gotten on my own, you know, without your guidance, because I just really didn't have the know-how right. to figure out how to structure a business. Um, well, it's, and, it's no different than, you know, me trying to teach somebody, you know, the spelling rules. It's just, right. it, you know, we each have our own expertise, and mm -hmm. so then we we'll partner up for the good of the, the whole business and stuff. So is this available? Is it, is yeah, it yeah, this is streets? available um, at www.silvermoonspellingrules.com. Cool. Just go to the store. It is available for purchase. And actually, the whole kit, which is, it's been fun to bundle the whole entire series. Okay. Uh, we got like a nice canvas tote bag, teacher bag. You know, te teachers, we love our bags. Right. <laughs> Put all of our supplies in. Uh, it, there's games, you know, card games and everything that go with it to support the teaching and learning cool. process. So. 
been a lot of fun to produce. And what's most fun is seeing the you know feedback from teachers because we have districts purchasing the, the curriculum all over the country um, into Canada. We don't ship internationally. That's one of my challenges I have to figure out. But um, we do have districts using the program in uh, in Canada, throughout like Squamish area, BC area, cool. uh, and all over the country. So it's it's been fun. Well, great. It's been fun uh, talking with you and, yeah. and kind of getting caught up again and learning more about you know Silver Moon and read learning yeah. and uh, enjoying it. You know, I I got such a kick out of picking up your book too, Gary. Well, actually, I won't lie. You you I, I you mailed me a copy, yeah, which right. was wonderful because we worked together before, but. <laughs> Um, it was in my shopping cart, and then it came to my door instead. So I thank you for that. No, that's it. A... But um, your book is fantastic, and I'm definitely going to buy multiple copies and, and hand it out to my colleagues that you know I have in business that are looking at opening their own business. And yeah. you know, I've had several I've, I've spoken to throughout the years, and I actually just had one gal contact me through email. She says, you know, I can't thank you enough. We you spoke with me a few years back, and you've inspired me to open up my own business. And she went ahead and she did it. Now she's got, awesome. you know. And again, it's the networking. It's getting to know people in your market wherever you are. And, you know, again, there's a lot of help out there. You just got to look for it and want that, you know. You, you got to want it first off and listen. Yeah. But the, And that you've been wonderful for that. But the idea, it's out there. So so okay. as, we, as we're getting close to the end of time here, so how about a... a a one main piece of advice, a little, you know, uh, you know, snippet uh, of something. Yep, just something that you can give uh, that would inspire somebody or help somebody in the future. So, so someone who's going into their own business, what advice do I give them? Any kind of uh, advice. I would well, <laughs> I would say surround yourself with a circle of very good advisors. You know, get someone who can be your mentor or or people that can be your mentors. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, always seek out people that are smarter than you in the areas you're not uh, an expert in. And I, I would say that, you know, you're looking at the business model, you're looking at your, you know, uh, your books, your financials, mm -hmm. uh, CPA, whatever, lawyer for your, for your legal entity yeah. that you're putting together. All those, you know, if you, if you need to get a good, a good banker who can talk to you about financing. So, again, it, I, I, you bring the you bring up a really good point is a lot of people would just let's go online and let's incorporate online, right? Let's mm. just Google and do yeah. I, yeah, I no, agree. uh, uh, right, right. <laughs> you, you need the subject matter expert, just like you're the subject matter expert here, the subject matter expert in in the legal and the accounting mm -hmm. side and you know the business model and yeah. all those types of things. Well, I, I've got a fantastic accountant too, and you know I remember when I first founded the business as an LLC. He's going through my paperwork at tax year end, and he's, he's looking at everything. He goes, oh, did you have someone do this for you? I said, yeah, yeah. I actually went worked with a lawyer to have the business entity set up. He says, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. So many people come in. They've done it wrong, and it's just a disaster to try to fix. And it costs more money at it the does, end of the day. It does. It cost more money, yeah. Oh, excellent. So, That's a great tip. So, yes. All right. We'll, well do thanks, this again. Thanks, thanks for chatting, Gary. This was fun. <laughs> well, next right. time we'll have coffee, though. Hey, I'm all about coffee. All right, thanks so much. Yeah, it was nice to see you, Gary.